What's up guys, GDMC here. Today we're back again, in this video we're going to be playing some Wukong in the jungle. So, I of course didn't want to upload another Wukong match because if you've been watching my channel, I've been spamming Wukong, definitely. But this turned out to be a very good match, it's a pretty high, high elo match too, it's Diamond Master Grandmaster rank. So I think like the Braum and Kaiser are master and then the enemy Jin Zhao is Grandmaster, so... I think I played really well this match and... That's the reason why I chose to still upload this match as a replay, even though, of course, I don't like doing this as much, but if it turns out to be a very good match, and I think there's a lot to take away, I definitely think it's worth it. So to start off, I'm doing the normal clear with the red to blue side clear. Because with Wukong, you have pretty decent gank potential with your third ability, but until you, once you get your ultimate, that's really, really when you can go for a good gank. So here now, I see the enemy Jin Zhao. I have... I had some vision of him. He was just on those like I was. So he's doing the same clear as me. We're both going to end up on opposite side scuttles. Meaning that there won't be a scuttle fight. So some things to keep in mind against Xin Zhao early is... Xin Zhao is a very, very strong early game champ. And especially if he catches you off guard, he'll easily beat you in 1v1. So really, I'm not going to be looking to go for too many 1v1s. But something to think about for the jungle role is, is that it's really not a 1v1 role... A lot of people might look at it that way, but being aware of the map and who's going to rotate for fights is super important. Because let's say that we both contested at the scuttle over here. Well, looking at our, our, at our teammates' positioning, my duo lane would rotate before. My mid lane would be able to rotate before too because they both have priority. So that's really just why jungle is not a 1v1 role, and I think that's important to keep in mind, definitely. Especially in the diamond ranks, especially. That's a problem a lot of people have, I see. And if you're a side laner like that, you gotta keep in mind too that you gotta help your jungler out if fights like that do happen. So over here now, I actually was pinging, I don't, you can't see right now, but um, if you're a jungler and you're clearing one side scuttle and there's just nobody contesting you, then there's a good chance that they're gonna be on the enemy bot side, or on the other side bot side scuttle. So if you can, if you could just ping that, Sometimes that'll help your teammates. So right now, I was looking to see if I can get a good gank off, but they got the turret right there. And that's another really important thing to do is don't force ganks if you can't get anything out of them. That's a mistake a lot of people do is they force ganks and they try and turret dive and die and just completely throw. So right now, I'm being a little bit safe because I don't know where the Jin Zhao is. So right now, they're just backing up. I'm not going for anything too crazy. I see the Jin Zhao is on the bot side again. And that's actually very smart for the Jin Zhao. And the reason why that is, is because um, the first time when he ganked that Malphite, the Malphite had used Flash. So he knew the Malphite was without Flash, and he was able to gank again, because without Flash, Malphite's pretty immobile. All they could do is just run away. So that was really smart on his part. So that got him some good kills early on. But the reason why I want to make this video is because... Really, a couple days ago, I was playing with some grandmasters, and one of them was a jungler, and in the jungle, at first, I didn't really notice anything special they were doing. I was like, okay, I'm pretty much doing the exact same thing. And in fact, they weren't. They didn't even really get a huge lead or anything. They weren't, like, fed or anything. They didn't get, like, 50 kills first minute. And instead, actually, they fell behind in gold. They kind of threw early and made some mistakes. So over here now, I'm getting this Olaf, and the reason why I'm doing that is because... I knew that Olaf was going to keep on playing aggressive. If you've been watching this, well, I don't, you haven't been able to see, but um, when I was playing, I was scrolling through the map and I noticed that the Olaf was playing very aggressive. And another thing to notice is when he uses his ult, then he can't get out of my ult as a Wukong. So that's very important to keep in mind because you don't want to just walk up to an Olaf and just try and gank him and ult him right away because then he's just going to counter ult and you won't be able to knock him up and he's just going to run away. So instead, if you see him engage like that with his ult, then you know that you can easily knock him up with your ult. So every now I saw they're diving the top side. I'm trying to find this Jinx. I'm trying to check if they're on the dragon or not. I'm pretty sure they aren't because they're super low. But as I was saying, I was playing with a Grandmaster Jungler the other day, and he didn't even really win the early game. He kind of threw and made some bad calls. But one thing I noticed was that even though they fell behind, they played very very well in the late game and there's one specific reason for that targeting because especially in the diamond ranks i think that's a issue that a lot of people lack is knowing who to target because for example as a wukong if i'm 
engaging in a fight and I'm ulting this Xin Zhao, that's almost, or in the late game, of course, when Xin Zhao gets super tanky, that's almost a waste because it's not going to do much. But if I can get onto their backline and target the right people, then that's going to do so much. Over here, I get a gigantic four man ult. And luckily, our Yes, I'll get a really good rotate. And we're able to clean this up. That was huge on my part. That was actually one way I went back in for that second part of my ult. It was because it's all the yes I was rotating. And we were able to pick that up. So now we got a bunch of them low. I know that Zin Zhao is low. Um, we got two kills. So I'm like, we can go for this dragon. We can force this right now. And if they come, then we can easily turn onto them. So that's exactly what I did. I forced this fight just because I already knew he was low. And I know that... We get this kill now. I'm finishing off the dragon really quickly, and the reason why I need to do that is because I know that their teammates are coming back. And especially the Zed. I don't want to... Zed actually burned ult on me earlier, so I know he doesn't have it up. But now I'm like, we should just get out of here. But... This Jinx really went for the engage and tried to pick up the Kaisa. The Kaisa, I think they use... Or they got some sort of barrier. I think it's from their ult. But they barely got out of that. But you're going to see later in this match how key targeting is and how that can completely change how you play these fights. Because if you've been watching my channel, another champ that you know that I like is Vi. Vi is another champ that I really love. And that's another champ where um, targeting right is super crucial to just moving your skill tier up. Or moving your skill tier pretty much getting better at the champ. Because Vi, of course, your ultimate is huge, but you can only hit one target with your ultimate. You're only going to target one person. So, knowing who to target is huge. So for now, the only reason I ulted the Zen Zhao is because of course he was low. In this stage of the game, nobody's really too tanky yet, so ulting anybody's fine. But you're going to see in the later game how tanky champs like Zen Zhao, other tanky champs like Garen, Alistair, all those champs, they get super tanky in the late game. So, you'll see that later on. But now that we got that first mid turret down... We go in for this Herald. And that was actually huge for me. We all rotated for that mid turret. And the reason why that was huge is because that was actually first turret. And for those of you all that don't know, first turret is worth a thousand gold for your entire team. Everybody gets 200 gold. So it's huge. Plus you get the turret gold from taking the plates. So that's something I always look for as a jungler. Because after that first dragon fight, usually then that's about the time when you're going to be looking for that first turret. And over here now, I see my teammates are pinging. And we want to collapse onto this Olaf. He ults. Or Malphite keeps on chasing. Ooh, does he get out of there? Oh, he did get out, but he burned everything, actually. Which is really good. So now we're in a weird position. I see our Brahms rotating, which is huge. I have my ults back off cooldown. We're just going to reset it. This is a really bad spot to fight, because they'll just kite back to all their turrets. And now our support is kind of pushing. Ooh, I actually stayed for a sec. All right. But as I was saying, after you do that first dragon fight, looking for that first turret as a jungler is huge. Looking at your lanes, seeing which ones are going to be able to push in their waves, which ones you'll think you'll be able to take the turret for is really key. Because, like, looking at the other lanes, pushing in that bot side is kind of hard just because um, Malphite doesn't really have too much of an advantage over Olaf. And that top side's pretty healthy. It's about even matchups, so... That's not really pushable. It was really just that mid lane that we're able to get. And now looking at the enemy team comp, they're all AD if you didn't notice. So I think I built the Thormill pretty early. I was thinking about going for Randuins, but only the Jinx is building crit. So I was like, I'll just get a Thormill. So what am I doing now? Okay, I'm rotating up to this top set turret because now I see it's kind of low. And I know this Jinx is mostly by themselves. So over here now... I'm able to just go straight in. And notice a key thing that I do here, actually. First of all, I didn't just go with my third ability. That's Gap closing is huge in this game. It's huge in any MOBA, playing any Bruiser. It's really key. And the reason for that is, let's say that I third abilityed onto that Jinx right away. And then that Jinx flashed away. Well, what can I do? I, have, I don't have a good way of getting back onto him unless I want to burn my flash too. So instead, what you could do is... Oh, he got a really good ult there. He actually pushed me away. So we're now we're just trying to push this turret down. Uh, we were sadly we're not able to push the second tier turret. But um, 
as I was saying, um, instead, if I engage just running up to him using my first ability and then the Jinx flashes away, then I could use my third ability to stall gap close onto him without having to burn my flash if they if the enemy Jinx does flash. So right now I'm keeping an eye on this dragon. Making sure they're on trying to pull a fast one. But I'm not rushing in there. I'm I'm pinging that they might be on it. And I see them teleporting. But notice how I'm not just rushing in there. I know I don't have my ult off cooldown. I see I'm telling I'm pinging this Yasa to just push the bot side. Because this would be this is a mistake that again a lot of diamond players make. Um, is they'll keep on if if they can't contest the dragon, just give it up. First of all, one dragon is not going to make or break the game. Multiple dragons, if you let them stack up, of course, then that could be huge. But one dragon, it's not worth going in and getting team wiped for it. Instead, giving it up and playing to your strengths and what's smart is definitely much more important. So here they keep on engaging. They're going really deep. I'm like, we got to chill here. See over here now. Yeah, I'm like, we gotta kite back a bit. They went in really, really far. Because notice what was happening there. I was pinging the Yasa to just push that bot set turret because I know, of course, Yasa is a pretty good scaling champ. Once they get to that late game, they could put in work if they combo with the Malphite ult, Braum ult, my ult. Um, so that's really huge. So I want him to get that gold, of course. I'm pinging him, just keep on going for that turret, getting, get that gold, and then just give up the dragon. No need to force it. So now I was trying to defend that turret, sadly I was not able to. But I have my Guardian Angel now. A really big item for a lot of tank junglers that are somewhat tanky is um, Gargoyle or Stone Plate, whatever you want to call it. It's really huge because what you'll see me do this, I think I buy it sometime. Uh, do I actually buy it right now, maybe? Let's see what I buy. Or I, I might be building it into my Thorm. Okay, yeah, I got it right here. I just bought the Gargoyle. And it's huge because... You can literally dive right into their backline's face, use their gargoyle, and they won't be able to kill you, while you can just ult him up and ult him up. So actually, notice over here how we don't even really have the kill advantage, but we do have a gold lead. And it's really key that we didn't throw that gold lead at that dragon where they did get it. And that's really important, because for example, look at that first dragon fight, when they kept on trying to contest us, even though we had pretty good positioning and we had the advantage... Imagine if they didn't try and force that. They would have the gold lead for sure because like three of them died there and we got so much off of that. So again, that's a mistake that I think a lot of people make. But you're going to start seeing the targeting that I'm talking about come into play about now because if you don't see now, the Zinza was super tanky. Ulting him won't do too much. Olaf, you can ult him if you need a peel for your backline, but you got to make sure that he uses his ult first or... Something along those lines, because if you just ult him and then he ults, it's kind of pointless for you. So now I went and got my shop in. We're looking for a fight. We're in a really, really weird spot. This is a choke point. If Malphite or Braum can land a good ult, that's actually really big. So here now, I'm like, this is a very, very bad spot. I'm actually like, we should just force the fight over here. That way we get a bit more positioning. We get more room to work with. See, I'm trying to get some control of this river area. See over here now? Notice how I'm going right onto their backline. I'm literally going onto their backline's face. That's huge. I'm just completely in these two people's face. And literally me and the Braum just delete their entire backline. And now I'm still healthy. And I'm able to come back and clean this up. Let's see who's over here. Who's left? Okay, it's a Sona and the Zin Zhao. So now I actually have my Guardian Angel up. We are able to get the Zin Zhao, and now we're just chasing down the Sona. Sadly, my Guardian Angel gets popped a bit. Yeah, it's worth it. We got the kill. Over here now. Olaf is pushing in the mid wave. Oh, I just stay because Olaf is the only one alive, so I'm like, they could just stop Olaf and I'll just push this turret. And that's another thing I want to talk about as a jungler is, a lot of times you can push side waves. You can push turrets down. And I think that's really key and... I hope I can definitely show that in my future videos when I'm playing other champs like Camille that can split push very, very well as a jungler. So now we're heading towards the dragon, of course. I have my gargoyle up. I have my ult up. I'm pinging I actually don't have smite up. That's really key if you're a jungler and your smite's down. As you can see, it's on cooldown. Ping it to your team. That way somebody can help you last hit. I was pinging it in the chat, but she just can't see in the replay. So now I'm getting the reset and I'm low on energy. Oh, nope, I'm not getting the reset in. What are we up to? Oh, we're trying to catch out this Jinx. We thought maybe we can get onto him, but 
we're not able to. Ah, uh, take those to try and get some energy back. So now, we're going for the fight. I notice again, I'm going right onto their backline's face. Like, I'm going right onto the Sona. And, oh, I sadly go down from the... I think I go down from some burn for something, but... That's kind of a bad fight. I don't... I'm not sure who started that up or why we did. I think you saw... I was, I was on the back. I was kind of trying to back up. I wanted to get a shop in, but... I think they kept on going. Plus, I don't even think our Kaisa was there. Our, somebody was farming topside. So that was kind of a mistake on our part. And we might actually lose this mid turret for it. Do we? Oh, this bomb is able to save it. Nice. So what are we doing? We want to make sure that... Yeah, they are definitely aren't doing Baron because their Zen's house dead. But for example, with Gargoyle, what you could do is you could literally just go in with your third ability, ult, and then right after your ult runs out because they're going to be knocked up during that ult time, that's usually the time when they throw most of their burst at you and much of their damage. So what you could do after that is you can actually use your second ability, that way you're invis for a bit, they waste some stuff on your clone. And then after your invis runs out, then Gargoyle. Because they're, first of all, they're going to waste a lot of burst on the clone most likely, and then afterwards you're going to have your Gargoyle. And then by then, you're going to have the second charge of your ults back off cooldown, so you could use that. And then after that, you kind of just play it by feels. If you feel like you can keep on diving, if you feel like you got to peel for your backline, see what you got to do. But over here now, really my goal is to get in this Jinx's face, because Jinx is a relatively immobile champ. They don't have any, like, dashes or anything like that. So right now, the Zed was going for it. I actually just ult him right away. Trying to track him. <laughs> don't want him to run away, throw the clones, and chase after him like a wild goose chase. That's unfortunate. So that's just why I ulted him. I didn't want him to throw out his clones and all that stuff. But... In this match, it's really key for me to get onto Jinx because Jinx, of course, they don't have any dashes or anything like that. And over here, this Olaf is just pushing this bot side. That's the that's a really important one v one because if Malphite goes down there, then Olaf keeps on pushing and we gotta back off. But thankfully, Malphite was able to get there, he uses ult, picks up the kill, and now I'm like, we can look for something now because we got five up. We can force this Baron, even if we don't want to finish off this Baron, this is important because it forces them into this spot here, and this is a really bad spot for him. We can easily turn onto us if we get a good engage, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Look, I go right onto the back line. I just ignore the Zin Zhao. My team can deal with the Zin Zhao, but look, me and the Braum are literally just chasing down their back line so badly right now. I didn't waste my time going for the Zin Zhao ulting him because just look at how tank he is. My ult's not going to do anything to him. And that's super important. And I also use my Gargoyle in the middle of that, I'm pretty sure. That's what's on cooldown. So now we get this Baron. Over here, and I'm like, I'm like, we should just we could just cut this low enough because I can smite it. So don't have to worry about the Zed really stealing it. Oh wait, actually I got, I remember I remember what happened there. Um I got the low battery sign. If you if you watch my, if you've been watching my channel for a while, if you're here from the Vanguard days, you know the 20% battery, 10% battery. That's a classic. Every match, because my phone battery left is kind of garbage. So like, Wild Rift literally eats up the battery. <laughs> so like, two matches, I'm gonna be like out of battery. So half the time in the middle of matches, I get like the 20% low battery sign, which is very unfortunate. A lot of times, sometimes it does screw me over. Like over there, I got the sign, and I'm like, oh crap, I gotta smite this, but. The Kaisa got it, which is good. So now we're here. I get a really good ward onto this Jinx. And look, I'm literally just tracking down this Jinx. I don't care about their front line or anything. I'm deleting their Jinx and then I'm seeing what's left. I use my Gargoyle. I see that they're going right onto me. And look at what Gargoyle can do. It's such a strong item. And now where yes, I was able to just delete him. Malphite gets a good ult and we're just tracking him down really. Kaisa gets a very good double kill. And that's it for this match, actually. We end over here, so... I'm getting pretty high up in Diamond. I've been hanging around the Diamond 1 range now. We, we At this rate, we should be getting Masters. Really, just changing up my targeting has helped so much. And it's made a huge difference in helping me climb in Diamond. And I've been really doing really well, even against, like, higher... Uh, tier junglers that I'm up against, like Grandmasters. Masters. It's really been working very well for me, but... Anyways, I definitely recommend... 
if you're in the mid tier to work on this in your game. See if that can help you improve because it's definitely been working for me and I've been getting so much better at jungle just doing that. If you've been watching my videos, you can kind of see the progression of how I'm getting better slowly over time. That's Yeah, hopefully we should reach Masters in the next week or so, most likely. Let's look at how much damage we did. Keep in mind, we only... Oh, that's the gold graph. We only had one damage item, and look at what we could do just with one damage item. Just a black cleaver. Just completely just... <laughs> you so much if you can get onto their backline. Like, looking at their backline, the Sona Jinx is really my goal. The Zed is like, if I can get onto him, nice. But, of course, Zed is... Kind of slippery one, so that one's a bit iffy, but really this Jinx zone is super important. But anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to show some support. Comment down below. Comment literally anything. I like reading the comments. It's nice. It's really nice to just see what people's opinions are, what they want to see in the future. But anyways, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the